Slade's here with the Senior Pickleball Report, powered by TNC Network. <laughs> Let's get it going. Today we talk with the owner of Raw Rain and Wind Pickleball Paddles, Gregory Storm. But before we get to that, if you like this content, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out all the links for the descriptions below and also the discount code for Raw Rain and Wind Paddles, 10% off Rain 10 discount code below, plus a bunch of other codes for shoes, other paddles, you name it. Take a look. Subscribe to that newsletter. Get your fix with all things pickleball. All right. Hey, let's get to that interview with Gregory Storm of Rain and Wind. Right from Raw Rain and Wind Pickleball, Gregory Storm, welcome to the Senior Pickleball Report. What's up? <laughs> New oh, Mexico. New Mexico, Florida. <laughs> He's got maps of the uh, the world and the U.S. behind him. Everywhere we're putting a, our brand, brother. He's a traveler. Got a so, um, you know, your video was uh, one of the more, I guess, entertaining ones to do because we have a little bit in common with the pollinator uh, kind of uh, bringing awareness to what's going on, obviously, in the world with pollination, global warming, affecting pollination as well, and bees. And I have a friend who was part of the pollinator uh, program about two or three years ago, and he wrote a song called Pollen, and his band is called Pound of Quicksand, and they're out of the Bay Area. And then we started talking, and I saw that you were doing the same thing, and obviously you have the pollination uh, kind of brand going for your paddles and it's beautiful and you're bringing awareness. So before we get into any of that, because you started a pickleball company, how did you get into this goofy game? Man, who wants to do pickleball? I don't know what's going on, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I, I Lauder, Lauderdale for a long time and I moved over to Naples and, uh, you know, I just figured, Hey, you know, uh, study some ma massage or something and hang out in Naples. But Absolutely nothing to do in Naples. Still nothing to do there except for pickleball. So uh, anybody thinking about going to Naples, you better be uh, 70 and older. Uh, and but anyways, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I kind of introduced pickleball in Rochester, New York for my parents and uh, went back to Naples just visiting home, you know. And then um, yeah. a guy had a pickleball shirt on. I was looking for it. I was like, I haven't seen any pickleball here anywhere. Where's it at? And he says, well, it's right down the street. I said, no, I looked. But. Sure enough, showed up and there they were. So um, that's 11 years ago, 10 years ago. <laughs> wow. You're, you're an OG, so, man. And then I met Kyle Yates and Barry Waddell and his family and uh, yeah. in Fort Myers. And that's where it really uh, took off for me as far as playing pickleball. So I guess I'm a little bit of an OG. Yeah, man. You play with the OGs too. I mean, Barry's no joke. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lob him. He gets mad. I'm sure, man. Cool. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, so that's obviously, you know, you're way, way before any of the madness starts. Um, you're playing a game that, you know, I had heard of because my wife taught PE and she was trying to kid, you know, get kids to like move and not hit a ball over a fence that, you know, had, you know, some pressure in it. So she's like, let's try this, this sport and mention it to me in, in passing. And I just kind of let it go. But, you know, you're starting way back, really. And then to kind of move forward and, create you know a business out of that what kind of drives that where does that idea come into play i think i'm um, just watching it grow in naples i mean it really um that facility wasn't even there when i was there mm -hmm. um so to watch that grow from a, a skate park with a 16 foot half pipe on it you know and yeah it's kind of you know a, a little bit disheartening because i'm a skater you know sure but, skater um, die man yeah so <laughs> that's right um, but you know, it's just, um, you know, now there's what 56 courts there, the U S open. I mean, yeah, right. So I played, I think the first, the third, and then, um, I work with adaptive wheelchair, uh, pickleball as well too. So that was right. a big thing for me there. I really enjoy that. You know, it's a, it's a big thing to give back. I'm a give backer guy, you know, and when it first started off, a lot of these tournaments did that, you know, and I really like yeah. that, that concept, you know, right. Um, don't see it so much. Seems like a big money grab these days, you know. You it see does, yeah. University with MLP and PPA, but just it's just I never see anything like it. Yes. Yeah. So, um, 
So, I mean, I guess, you know, being sponsored by Gearbox and Selkirk and these different brands, you know, after a while, it's like, okay, why can't I just do something and, you know, um, find a good manufacturer, which kind of happened, which was really nice, you know? So, um, I don't know. It just, it just happened, you know? Um, and I wanted to give back with, with the brand. So I thought, you know, why not? I I got super crazy allergies and they suck really bad, you know? And so, you know, I've always been a a big supporter of local honey and, and, you know, that kind of helps out, you know? Um, so just tied the bee kind of thing into it's a raw carbon fiber. I mean, yeah, you know, you know, that's, that's pretty important. You know, we, we do do the T700, you know, which is definitely the, the top, the top carbon fiber. We, we don't right. want to use cheap in the brand, you know, by any means we want to stay a higher, higher level brand as far as the right. carbon fiber. I know there's a lot of, um, a lot of tech coming in with Kevlar and, you know, all these different things. Right. But, you know, not totally excited about that sandwiching. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's cool. I don't know. I mean, everyone thinks they need power, right? They need thermoform. They need Gen 2 paddles. Um, yeah, so we're, we created a Gen 2 paddle. Why not, you know? And uh, guess what? You know, I like playing with it, but you really need to, uh, you got to control that that, yeah. so, that that type of paddle. So, um, yeah. But yeah, definitely, um, again, giving back to local honeybee farmers, wherever we have brand ambassadors, including Maui, Hawaii, and the Big Island. Um, right. Uh, we're we're pretty excited about it, and uh, again, it's just to give back. Same thing with my tournaments. When I'm running tournaments, um, we give back to NAMI, which is mental health, which is another mm-hmm. give back thing. So, I'd like to see a ton more of that coming back from different pickleball entrepreneurs. It'd be cool. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's what's that's what makes you an OG a little bit because you saw some of this in the beginning of what it was and how it was built and how community was brought in, and not just you know hanging out and meeting people, but literally like engaging in the community and like what's going on what can we all do to raise either awareness and money or both and still do something fun and pretty cool and obviously you know you're doing you know the pollination and you talked about maui and you got a paddle that's you know um you know built for that particular cause and things like that and it's it's gorgeous i mean look at that thing so sexy this is a new thermal form it's not out yet yeah. I mean, it's a beautiful paddle. It's thermal form. And you, you made a great point. If we go back to thermal forming a little bit, you know, cause I've been, I play with a bunch of folks who like me have been playing, you know, a couple of years tops. And, you know, we talk about paddles a lot because I do reviews and yeah. And I, you know, they talk about like, well, what's the latest and greatest thing out? And I'm like, well, you know, it's, it's one of those things, you know, I don't know if it, not everybody should be playing with a, a rock carbon thermal form paddle, uh, you know, because if you want to keep the ball in play, Right. Um, some of us don't have the talent level quite yet to be playing with a Ferrari. Um, <laughs> and maybe we should be playing with a, you know, a Ford F-150 or something that's a little more, I guess, yeah. uh, reasonable for keeping the ball in place. So maybe talk a little bit about that because you're in the industry and you're the first paddle manufacturer that's actually been willing to come on. Um, most of them are a little shy. So let, let's talk about like what's coming and what's here already and kind of this more, more, more faster, harder attitude. And because it seems to me there's a wide variety of different playing styles out there. And right now the the hot setup is obviously thermal form, raw carbon, sort of the longer handle elongated shape. So talk about what your feelings are about kind of like what's out there, what's available and what you kind of hope to see. Um, So, I mean, again, you know, for me coming into it, um, being sponsored by big companies, you know, Mm -hmm. um, they don't really give you back a lot. I don't know, you know, unless yeah. you're one of the yeah. top players, you know, everybody thinks right. they're sponsored. They get two free paddles, a hat and a shirt, and they're sponsored by Selkirk or Yelp, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm right. sponsored, but, you know, I signed a contract and I'm sorry, I can't touch your paddle. I'm like, yeah. guys, there's so many paddles out there that no one really cares anymore. You know, right. if they're going to get mad at you for selling one of the demo paddles they gave you, then uh, I'd say goodbye really quick. Yeah. Right. And that happens. You know what I mean? So, sure. um, yeah, but the juniors coming in stuff like that, you know, I love seeing those guys come in because we did focus on building longer handles and longer paddle faces for yeah. tennis players that are coming in. Cause we all know yeah. that the Jack Sox are, you know, all these, all these, these right. players are coming in from tennis, you know? Uh, so right. we're really after those tennis players coming in that um, mm-hmm. like to do a two hand backhand, you know, um, I, I teach my students all the time that, hey, you know, we got more reach up at the kitchen. Why not cheat and get that reach? You know what I mean? With that yeah, long for sure. Kitchen, you know, um, you know, I just I could never go back to a wider 
paddle face. You know, I, I remember like, I think when I first started playing, it was like, I was with Manta sports or something. Manta's yeah. a brand and they had the Bigfoot paddle. It was like this wide or like a coach Mo paddle, you know, like a remember? billboard. Yeah. Yeah. So and the handle's this big, right? It's like real yeah, short, it's a-, you know? a little nub. Right. So right. why can't you make those paddles? People ask. I'm like, well, that's not, that's not our brand, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So the future is definitely uh tennis players coming in the game and, um, looking for a strong paddle, but even a touch paddle to slow their tennis game down a little bit, you know, as far as they don't, they don't need that power because they can generate it themselves. You know, we have some pros that are, they're, are testing our paddles right now. Do I need a pro out there? Sure. Who who doesn't love to have a pro, you know, and, uh, you know, sell the $250 paddle because there's a name on it. Right. 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 Exactly. (laughs) So, Uh, I mean, that's, let's talk about an approach like that because obviously I do reviews for, you know, there's, 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 a, there's enough people out there already reviewing Selkirk and, oh, reviewing sure. and Yola and they may, get, they may get a dime too. I don't know. What do you think? They, uh, well, yeah, my guess is, uh, correct. <laughs> maybe a and, dime. And you know, it, there's hundreds and hundreds of paddle manufacturers and, you know, they're pretty good. They're good paddles. I mean, they're, they're as good yeah. as anything that I've hit. If that's a Selkirk or anything that I've hit is a Yola. And I've talked to a bunch of guys and gals that are getting started in it like yourself over the phone, although you're the first one to come on. So that's fantastic. <laughs> and I appreciate it. But at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's an interesting approach because some of them are like, you know, do I go after the get, do I get the names? Do I get the pros? Do I sign pros? And that's the approach that I take. There are other um, approaches that I've seen where people are just out there and they're hustling. They're at tournaments. They're giving paddles away. They're talking to folks. Um, and then there's others who are doing a lot of social media stuff, a lot of, sure. you know, every day there's stuff and stuff that, that they're posting. Um, so, and then there's a combination of those things. When you started to think about this in real terms of like, okay, I'm going to put something together. I'm going to develop a paddle. I'm going to develop a company uh, in a brand. Um, what were you thinking? Were you thinking, God, I gotta, you know, I know some pros. Am I going to sign these guys? And, and what was your kind of thought process? Yeah, I, I, you know, it's that thought's always there, you know, to have the pro on your onboard, right? You know, um, but then it comes down to, well, what paddle are they going to like? And, you know, uh, am I, am I going to have to keep on submitting different paddle uh, shapes to USAP, yeah. which can get very costly, very, sure. very costly. So, um, you know, how does that all come into play? You know, then you've got to pay. Uh, the pro to go out on tour. Well, are they really pro or are they just a five Oh wanting to be pro? How many, right. how many people do we know out there that are those guys? Yeah. And they're just not going to make it past five Oh, they can go play all the open events they want, but they're just getting destroyed. You know? So right. I mean, right. you know, I want, you know, a, just a strong singles lady partner or, or a, a player or, you know, whoever it is. I, you know, again, we have got some paddles out there that some pros are testing. We have a, a lady that's number one in the world on the APP circuit right now. She's testing some of our paddles and if she likes it. Yeah. I don't mind throwing a few dollars out there, you know, yeah. but again, we're organic, we're local. Uh, same thing like your, uh, your, your CBD company. That's really cool. Raw, right. like Raw. shout yeah. out, you know, I love those guys. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I just really, I'm, I think for us to stay local and um, spread organically is what I'm after. I don't need to uh, spend a lot of money in marketing um, because we're not sell Kirk or again, Yola or any of these big companies that can do that. Right. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So, you know, we'll, we'll offer paddles to, to strong players, you know, but um, you know, they can have whatever they want from us, but again, you know, to pay them to run on a circuit, that's, that's MLP's job and PPA. They yeah. can pay the five yeah. million dollars now and the, the current Porto. You know the you know Ogden's own Ogden, Utah, right? So that's the yeah. town, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you you make a good point, and then you know you you also touched on um, you know the world of paddle testing and you know and where that's at Heavy. and. I'll use the word testing and, you know, um, obviously there's been, um, a, a lot of, uh, drama over the last few years, you know, starting probably well before, um, the whole carbon thing. Uh, but what are your thoughts on, you know, kind of when you, when you're creating something, you know, what's in your head? Because obviously, you know, it costs you to do this. It costs you to get USA pickleball. You got to send them something. It's got to get approved. 
blah, right. blah, blah. Um, how, how tight is the, are, are the parameters really out there? Because it seems to me I'm getting a lot of things that are similar, no doubt, um, similar manufacturers. But I've noticed in the last probably couple months, I'm getting things that um, what I would consider being, um, I don't know if I'd call it pushing the envelope, but different materials, different things within the shape you know, holes on the side type things. Yeah, yeah. So talk a little bit about, you know, when, when you're creating something and having to think about like, is this going to pass? Will it hold up? Will it, you know, will, sure. will it start to delaminate? Blah, blah, blah. So yeah, yeah. Are you looking to stay up to date on the latest pickleball news and tips? Look no further than the Sleeve Senior Pickleball Report newsletter. Get the scoop on the sport, learn how to stay healthy while playing and find out about upcoming tournaments. Subscribe now to get all the pickleball info you need. So, I mean, am I going to stop making a white paddle? Right. That's, that's a great, that's a great big, point. Big controversy on that right now, right? Yeah. Just because yeah. the MLP says we're not playing with white paddles anymore. That doesn't right. mean I'm going to stop making this white paddle. That is a huge right. thing that I get all the time. I yeah. love the white paddle. The touch yeah. on the paddle is amazing. And that's just a little bit of paint over the top of that T700 surface, uh, creating that softness and that and that touch. So, I mean, yeah. no, but you know, I mean, people. I mean, who are, who's who's your main people grabbing paddles? It's your it's your beginners, your three O's, your three fives. Yeah, the top the top players are just wanting equipment, right? Obviously, yeah, right. you know how that goes. So yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, within you know, making the paddle, you know, carbon was in trouble when we started making these paddles, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, we went after the, the T 700 or, you know, the, even a T 300 would have, would have been fine too. Right. There's T yeah. 800. There's all this stuff out there. Right. So, um, yeah. So everyone wants to jump on the carbon bag bandwagon, you know, but is it yeah. a good product? Is it holding together? You know, I don't, we haven't lost any of our paddles, maybe, you know, very few. So definitely yeah. happy manufacturing and i'm very surprised with that so i guess i kind of lucked out with finding some good manufacturing which is very important um if i'm losing rails and edge guards all the time and they're coming loose i know that we definitely have a manufacturer problem and i see that yeah. all the time with these big brands all right. the time right so if i don't have a paddle coming back or someone complaining about that kind of thing i'm pretty stoked on that you know yeah. Yeah. Especially when I'm going to the court, and I'm like, "Hey, let me let me feel that uh, engage paddle." <clears throat> I mean, um, you know that paddle, right, 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 right. And then the edges are coming off. Yeah, you know, it's like, okay, you know, will they send you another one? Yeah, they sent me one already. Well, it's coming off again. You know, you want you want to keep on having that paddle, or are you going to try like an organic brand that's solid? You know what I mean? Right, right. So, yeah. So like, let's talk about like the research that goes into something like yeah. that and finding a manufacturer because. I can guarantee you there's people still obviously starting to think about starting paddle companies and so on and so forth. So I have no idea how many manufacturers are here domestically. I have no idea how many are in China. I have no, like, I don't know the pool size and I'm not asking you to give me any of that information if you don't want to, but like, yeah. what is the process of, of going to find something and find a, you know, a manufacturer that you, you know, is reliable. And you obviously you're talking to other paddle companies a little bit, I would guess. Yeah, what's funny now is um, once we locked down the first manufacturer, it just kind of, I'm not really sure how it happened, which is kind of funny, you know, mm -hmm. I guess maybe in um, good luck, but definitely faith, you know, there's no doubt about it. Um, yeah. You know, um, it just kind of happened. And then I realized that, you know, it was, it was one of the top manufacturers for most brands out there. So I'm like, oh, this is cool. But now the price point keeps going up on these guys, right? Right. So, now I'm getting manufacturers reaching out to me from the same areas of the production okay. and you know, trying to earn my business. So it's like, okay, well, maybe I better start having some backup manufacturers and test their products and see if they're um, comparable to what I have now. Okay. And yeah. Their price, and their price point could be cheaper. So, you know, why not have backup manufacturers if, you know, um, these guys are too slow, you know, your first manufacturer is too slow and and getting you product or whatever it might be or charging you more for shipping or, you know, all these things come into play. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, everything, everything small like that comes into play, you know, how good are they at reproducing or giving you things that maybe it might have a, a, a defect, which we uh, thank goodness, not a ton. 
So yeah. are they going to help us with that? You know, so there's all these little different things that you're looking for feedback from these these manufacturers. And if you don't have a good, I think, uh, relationship with them as far as a personal relationship besides business, yeah, uh, it's better to have that kind of that kind of thing. Sure. That makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. What uh, like, give me an idea of the process to like as far as. Let's just start with length. Like, you know, you get a paddle idea and, you know, you, I don't know, you draw something like the, the, from the, the moment, the idea, and then you're going to start going down that road. What are we looking at from where it's the idea you kind of get going right away to like, it's for sale. I mean, it's probably different. I get it depending on where, who the manufacturer is and all those things, but like in general terms, how, how long a period are we talking here? Um, good six months easily just yeah. to start, just to start. And that's just me working with another manufacturer, another company and starting to produce a paddle brand and things didn't work out. So yeah. maybe even a year, you know what I mean? Right. Um, yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's, it doesn't happen overnight. I think a lot of these guys that are coming on board or maybe spoon fed kids, you know, I, I, it mm-hmm. seems to be to me yeah. um, with nothing to do. Yeah. And I mean, dad are like, Hey, you know, go, go do this, you know, and then, you know, they, they just get going and there's your paddle, there's your rhombus or something. I don't know. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So. Well, that's the thing. Like how long, like, you know, we, I know, I, I think I read something last year, like, you know, there were 2021, there were 120, you know, paddle companies submitting approval now for USA. Yeah. Yeah. And then it went, you know, whatever it was and, and whatever it's going to be. What, what do you think is a manageable number for the marketplace? I mean, you know, I don't know how many tennis racket manufacturers that are in the world. I, I can't, I don't know, but like, there seems to be a lot of pickable. There's five, five real ones, right? <laughs> so what do you think is going to happen ultimately to the marketplace? Because I can't imagine they're all going to stick around. I'll, I'll just compare it to like, I, the closest town to me is about 10,000 people. They got 15 dispensaries. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 10,000 people. I'm like, there's right. no way 15 dispensaries are staying ar- around in this town. Um, yeah. So it, it seems to be the same thing going on with in the paddle industry. Same um, thing. Hundreds and hundreds. Bend. Yeah, I went to Bend, Oregon. I love Bend. Uh, two years ago, played a big tournament out there, and I'm like, whoa, like tons of dispensaries, right? Yeah. Um, but also tons and tons of product. Right. Um, you know, and I went to a lavender farm just to hang out and check out the lavender farm, yeah. and said, "What's going on?" You know, with this whole, you know. The, the hemp scene here and he says uh well he's like everything's rotting he says there's so much product yeah it's just it it's rotting and so now people are just you know buying you know actual they're growing actual hemp and not the you know you know the the top marijuana stuff or the strength right. you know so right. it's very interesting to hear that from a different type of farmer which is cool right you yeah know? And I'm just checking out the bees flying on the lavender, you know, on there. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. But, but then I went last year to Ben and then like everything was gone. Like not mm-hmm. the dispensaries, but all the growers were just like, I'm like, where's the fields? They're gone. So yeah. I, you know, maybe that's going to happen with the paddles, you know? Um, I can't I think, imagine we could have 500 plus or uh, whatever it keeps growing to. And are they, and are they all the Yola Hyperion shape? Cause that's yeah, all right. I see. That's all right. I freaking see. You yeah. know, so when it does come to producing a shape, I think that I'm just going to copy everybody else, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, no, not really, but no, but I mean, I mean, at some point you don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time. I get that. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah. But I'm not going to go to coach Mo, you know, right. Right. I'm just not going right. to do it. You know, yeah. um, I'm going to, st- so basically when I built the paddles though, I just built stuff that I like to play with because I've been doing it for a while. Right. So right. if people like it, they can buy it. You know, otherwise I'm just like, well, okay, go buy your Yola. You know, it's got Ben Johns on it, you know, go ahead. Mm-hmm. You know, are you a better player? No, nope. we just destroyed you 11 too. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's not always that kind of thing, you know, as far as um, just a name on a paddle type stuff, but obviously, you know, Yola came out pretty fast and they exploded pretty fast. So they definitely right. have some big marketing uh, money. You know, some, some brands just don't have it. I don't have it to do. Right. You know, yeah. but, you know I what? To a I'll, guy. Get back, I'll get back to pollinators and pollinators now. And, you know, my yeah. local honeybee farmers, there's no doubt I'll give that money back to them because that's more important than just the grab all the time. And if, again, if people want to play with a paddle, 
and they support bees. I love it. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, if we don't have pollination, it doesn't matter. It's just going to be a bunch of paddles laying around rotting. <laughs> ah, no food, man. No, no food. food, man. Can't eat a paddle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Got to play pickleball. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was talking to a guy, a paddle manufacturer, and, you know, he was talking about Yola too. He's like, you know, in, about how, how, when you start ordering units, you know, like, you know, they can, they can order X amount of units and I can only order like, you know, whatever, 5,000 and they can order whatever, 50,000. How does something like that come into play when you're thinking about like, you've got a paddle, you're going and obviously you learn as you go. If you have, you know, you release one and you learn from your mistakes and how much you should order and so on and so forth. But like, how do you, you project like ordering? And it seems to be like what happens to me is people will order, they'll, they'll, they'll get it so much. And then, you know, you'll see, um, you know, they don't have any for like three to four weeks, yeah. which kind of stops their momentum a little bit. So walk me through a little bit of that as like, you know, how many units and then what to what the price point should be at those units because obviously it depends on what they're selling it to you for as well i get but hey if you're looking for very very comfortable court shoes in fact the most comfortable court shoes i've ever worn and i've worn a lot of them over the years playing different sports try fitville we have a link in the description that gets you 20 bucks off your purchase yeah yeah without giving the price points away but you know yeah. um Definitely the 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 inventory. I I was out pretty quick on mm -hmm. a couple of the models, and I'm like, oh crap, you know. And then I'm like, okay, I got to wait a month, two months, maybe to get product, you know. And now I know it's yeah. coming from the same manufacturer, so everybody's got that lag, right? So I'm like, right. Okay. And that's why it's good to have again these backup manufacturers that are producing pretty similar or better sometimes with a lower yeah. price point. That's not a bad idea, um, right? Now I'm giving everything away, right? But eh. um, but it's important to do maybe something like that. You know what I mean? But the inventory, you know, we 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 like to do smaller batches. Um, it's like it's like uh, raw, right? We want we want smaller batches. We want good stuff right. coming in all the time. Yeah, and we don't want it sitting on the side, right? Kind of just uh, sitting, right? Right, right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because then it's, it doesn't it's not as fresh, right? So right, um, right. But yeah, we'll still keep our big sellers that we have, of course, you know. Um, but I think this the smaller batch stuff works pretty good sometimes because then you can test some of the newer stuff that comes out with smaller right. batches. And if it doesn't Point. go, you know, does that mean I'm gonna run out and, and build the you know the 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 happy face paddle, you know, I call it, <laughs> you know, yeah, with the holes in it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I already seen, you know, I saw it the other day. I saw, I know you, you like the slice paddle and I, I saw that the other day. He's coming out with a new paddle with the holes. I have it. Yeah. The same manufacturers approached me with the same paddle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And that's the thing. Like that's, that's, that's yeah. what people wonder, like, you know, and, you know, is, and then I, you get enough paddles, you know, they're like, you look at two of these, you go, these just have different names on them at some point, you know? Um, and I get that, you know, it's not like there's, 10 million manufacturers out there doing it. And, it, it, and then it becomes part of, you know, marketing and obviously the philosophy yeah, like behind purple. the company. <laughs> yeah. Like, or you like purple, you're in the Barney or whatever it happens to be. Yeah, um, I like purple. But I do think this is where, this is where I think it's really interesting because really then it becomes at some point um, it does become about um, what they're doing um, with the money, um, like what you're doing, um, how, what kind of culture they're creating. And that's what I like about raw is um, there's a few, there's probably a handful of companies that I've dealt with that really, I think have a culture going um, and you're one of them. And it, it, that's what makes it fun to own a raw paddle because yeah. at the end of the day, it's a group of people that are sort of behind the same cultural ideas and want the same things, not only out of the paddle, but out of the company that they're investing their money into. Um, and so I like, I like companies that are doing that and you're one of them. So, you know, obviously you have, you know, the pollination, which we've talked about and, you know, giving money uh, to Maui, which is a great thing. You may, your paddles are beautiful. If you go through them, it's hard to pick one because every single, well, you know, I, had one to make, I had to make the aesthetics a little better here. Yeah. You I know. mean, look at that. Look at that. And it's right up on my screen as you do it. So yeah. and then it's flipped to the white. So. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Look at the little yeah. bees, little bees on there. 
Yeah, I mean that just the li- that's what I'm talking about. It's the little things like that, the aesthetics, the culture, being part of a team. Um, you know, I, I like what you do. I like what bread and butter does. Um, yeah, those yeah. are cool things, and they're fun. And at the end of the day, here's I think the best part for me is y'all are good at what you do, but you don't take yourselves way too serious. Like I love the hat. It's a throwback a little bit to the Kiss Army, which I was a member of. Yeah, Hong Kong, Hong Kong Fui shirt. Hmm. I mean, my God. Who does that? Who you does do, man? That? We just so we just we just released these. These are just that, I, that's I what I'm talking your, about. And your sweaters Those things are more important than the paddle ultimately in some regards. I just saw Dark Star Orchestra. I keep on thinking of them when I look at the, your sweatshirt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I miss Jerry. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, yeah. We all do. Anyway, <laughs> um, so talk about moving forward um with Raw. Like where where do you want to see it go in the next few years? Because obviously pickleball, I don't, I don't know, maybe you see it differently, but I don't see any momentum uh, changing it, at least in the next year to two years. Um, it's, it's, it's going gangbusters. So where do you want to be? Um, you know, I have, I have an academy here in St. Pete too. So, I mean, I am so busy with everybody wants to learn the game. Right. So yeah. I mean, um, this year, instead of doing three or four tournaments that I do every year here locally, um, I did two up and up north, which, which was nice. And I like to get away from the weather here sometimes because it's super hot here in the summer. It's just nasty. So yeah. um, I decided to do another one December 3rd, which is pretty cool. And, you know, again, we uh, uh, just supporting the NAMI mental health organizations that are local here is is big. You know, I think a lot of people got messed up with the virus and just a right. lot of different things, PTSD, you know, uh, a lot of different things from veterans and stuff like that. Um, and even just meeting, you know, a dude at a tournament the other day, the dude had no arms and one leg and he's out there yeah. playing pickleball. And I'm right. like, dude, you're, you're, I'm giving you a paddle right now. And he's, he's yeah. like, no way. I'm like, yeah, dude. Yeah. And he just, I mean, strapped it on his, his little arm, you know, that he had. Yeah. And, he was actually awesome, like an awesome yeah. player. And I'm um, like, let, just let, me, let me get you out of that Selkirk shirt and give you the Hong Kong Fooey shirt. Now yeah. we're talking, yeah. You know what I mean? Get out so, of that corporate bullshit. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, so he said he signed and he thought he was with them. And I'm like, yeah. Bro, you know, I mean, you know, I love Tyson McGuffin kind of, you know, I used to really love him more, but now it's like yeah. his demeanor out there is just, uh, it's lost, you know, and I just yeah. don't know how Selkirk continues to, I don't know. I, I like the dude, you know, I, but yeah. I don't know. You know, I always got in trouble when I, I did shit like sell Kirk, you know, when I was out yeah. with their brand, you know, someone yeah. would send an email. Well, this player was doing this, you know, with the, you know, the mix. You know, I don't know. I'm going from, I don't know. It's nice just to be able to do my own own thing and do the karate sure. chop. Yeah. You know, do it on the court, you know, and I don't have to answer to anybody, you know, but I'm going to go to that little dude over there with no arms and one leg. And I'm getting a paddle, man, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's yeah, I cool think stuff, that, you know? Yeah. I, I yeah. think you hit it right on the, the nose. It's, it's one of those things like you, I think you almost, in a lot of cases, you just become a different person when you're so adherent to whatever the brand is that you, by the way, didn't create. And then, you know, they can create something around your image and, and so on and so forth, but it's not your blood, sweat and tears. It's certainly not your money. Um, and it's certainly not your, uh, your reputation. So I think the fact that, um, you know, what you're doing and what others are doing, um, it, it is, a, it is, it has more of, like I mentioned before, a cultural and communal feel to it, because at some point, you know, you just get too big. And I live in a small community of about 13 people. And I always tell people this, like, if you live in a city, um, you don't know when your neighbors are sick. But when you live amongst 13 people in a, in, on 15 to 20 acres, um, you know what's going on with people in their lives and if they're suffering and if they're hurting. And if you take it just to a business and, and you know, and you have your people that are out there pushing your product. Um, and it's a small group of people, they get back to you and you hear things a little more. Love it doesn't have to go through so many chains of command before you hear a, a, a complaint and it's way too late. I think that's what I like. And I think there is a particular size that works functionally amongst people, whether it's a business or a community. So I, I love, yeah. that's what I love about what you guys are doing. So well, that's, that's key, man. That's key. You know, um, 
And if, if, if it's not there, then, you know, I mean, I just get tired of seeing the same paddle every time I go out there too, you know, yeah, so, yeah. you know, no one's any better. And this kid's coming out of college and he's got the, the, the smiley face paddle and mm-hmm. he's just can't even hit the paddle. You know, I mean, it's so powerful that paddle that it just, it goes yeah. out every time, you know, uh, you know, after a while you kind of, you can kind of even read the paddle and what it's going to do with certain players. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's another thing too, you know, as far as ours, you know, I mean, we have a lot of good touch paddles at 16 millimeter, but we also mm-hmm. go to 14 millimeter and create that, that power. Right. Yeah. We've yeah. 13 millimeter, which the 13 millimeter was the hottest paddle for a long time. Yeah. And, then, um, you know, uh, the, my people in Toronto still order it like crazy. I'm like, sure. You want that paddle? We got new stuff, yeah. you know, <laughs> um, we got thermoform now. <laughs> 13 mil, eh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They still like the 13 mil. So guess what? Yeah. So do you really need to make the thermoform paddle when you got the 13 mil? You know what I mean? So it's like, right. why do I got to keep on making all this stuff when I have it already? Kind right. Of, right. Yeah. It's just not yeah. foam injected, right? It's not the trend word, right? Or the trend. That's right. Uh, it's not unibody, you know? Right. It's yeah. not, um, you know, I'm not on Pickleball Studio saying everything's unibody. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. You know, people go. Like I, I get criticized once in a while for my reviews because they're like, they're like, well, you need to say more. I'm like, listen, it's a plastic thing with, you know, it's a sandwich. It's not, I'm not talking about NASA here, man. I'm talking yeah. about a paddle. It's got some honeycomb in it. You know, it's got, they, and a lot of them are kind of the same. So for me, it's more about what are they doing different than somebody else that I like about this particular paddle? What it's really more the feel that the paddle gives me and the company and the brand give me because after a while, a lot of them feel pretty similar, but yep. at the end of the day, I'd rather put, you know, my support and for a lot of people, their support and their money behind something that is doing something fun, cool, and giving back. And that's what you're doing. Oh. And, and that's why you're on the show. And that's why I like talking to you. So well, I appreciate it. I definitely appreciate it. It's, it's important to, to support that kind of stuff versus, um, you know, the, the same manufacturer that's making my paddle, you know, just because they go on a, you know, again, another another podcast that has paid followers and right. more going on, you know, yeah. um, that does generate the interest and they're going to go right to that podcast just to buy a paddle because right. of their, because right. of their review that are three, five, four Oh players, you know, right. it's kind of right. Like, okay. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Right. So whatever's a great way of putting it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's why, that's why organic you're organic. And that's why I even agreed to like do this. Cause I think it's, yeah. it's a great idea. And, I don't have the pink, light blue background with the big microphone. And you only got 13 I got my gaming headphones on. <laughs> and only 13 people in town, right? Exactly. <laughs> New paddle company, Pickle, PCKL. Great paddle line, great price points. Anything you want from starter paddle to intermediate to a pro series high level paddle. Check them out. Get 15% off using my discount code. Pickle. It's the future. Uh, love it. Love it. Yeah, but, dude. No, yeah. man. I mean, it's definitely key. I'm, I'm glad you got my paddle. I'm going to, I'll send you one of the, um, the Aloha paddles and you can. Kinda, yeah, I was just, I, I was in Maui, right. Uh, a year before it happened. So only time I've ever been there. And, uh, yeah, I love, I'm, I'm so glad you're doing that because. Well, we are just about to, uh, do a tur- I was just going to do a tournament at the end of the uh, last month. And oh. then and those fires came. Yeah. Um, so I was going to do that with, uh, 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 Maui pickleball over there and we were going to oh, yeah. set up to go. And, um, we were like, yeah, we better hold off on this one, man. Cause Lahaina is yeah. done, you know? So oh, brutal. Yeah. So now we're going to have to maybe reschedule that Pacific rim or do something around that. I don't know, you know, yeah. um, but those courts are nice. The Wailea courts are pretty nice there. So, uh, and then we're, you know, we have one court up in the mountains, which she wasn't touched. Uh, Lori Lonnie's uh, oh. court there. She's a big supporter of us and sells our paddles and stuff. So she's got one court, but you get to drive 40 minutes from, it's kind of cool. You know what I mean? To, Very cool. I think Yeah, yeah. she's just a, another big give back or supporter artist. Uh, yeah person so um and, and again small and it's you know, oh, you, know you, you get invited there it's, you get to hang with some cool people because not everybody knows about it or gets invited so well it's usually you know the, the uh, owen wilson's and stuff go up there and play you know whoever <laughs> <laughs> is 
put a ball right in Owen's uh, Adam's apple, wake him up a little. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Fix his nose up a little bit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So uh, before I get you out of here, just love to get, because yeah. obviously you've been, you know, around the game a long time, played uh, with a lot of high end players, know a lot of people. Um, talking about the pro scene a little bit and obviously the tumultuous last uh, month and a half here with MLP, PPA, and always forgotten APP. Give me some thoughts, man. Give me some hot takes. What's going on? Where's it going? What do you like? What don't you like? Man, that's, that's crazy right now because we have a local owner here uh, that I know what's really confusing to me uh, right now is, uh, you know, we've got a local team here that's out on the MLP smash Florida smash. Yeah. And um, I just was trying to figure out what was going on in Atlanta and why Travis Rettenmeyer was uh, playing for a different team, but owns Florida Smash. So I'm so confused. <laughs> Very confusing. <laughs> like what happens There's when... There's confusing uh, times here, Gregory. <laughs> what happens when those guys start playing with a crown pickleball, man? Kevin Perkins' ball is amazing right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and by the way, you get, some, you get some balls with the paddle, right? With the yeah. Oh yeah. For every paddle that we sell, Kevin Perkins, a uh, crown pickleball. Um, his balls are like really cheesy and stinky, but, um, <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a ball that's in between Dura and Franklin and okay. uh, that thing's solid. I cool. you need to get smells from him. He's, he's a good dude. Yeah. He's right out on, of man. stock. Coming in the stock soon. I've heard actually, I've heard really good things about that ball. So, yeah, Tyler Loom's a big advocate. Jim, uh, Jim over there and Tyler, uh, those guys are big advocates of it. Um, yeah, anyways, yeah, I just I didn't understand that. I don't know how that works. How you can, I don't know how that works either. Conflict of interest, I guess. Well, I don't know. Is is betting come to MLP yet? Because that would be an interesting, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, that could work out in itself. You know, maybe you have to make more money getting paid on another team to pay your other. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's the purse? <laughs> <laughs> right. You got to maybe play for this team and get paid for that team. So you can pay for your other player that's on your team. Right. Right. Very right. strange. Very strange. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I don't know. You know, it's, it's funny to again, watch, you know, just e- explode within one or two years. And all of a sudden there's a team that's owned by some local people here, you know, it's like, yeah. okay, well, who's got the money and who doesn't have the money? We're, Who's paying these contracts is what I'd like to know. Yeah, uh, that's that's a great point uh, because obviously, you know, it became the bidding war and then the bidding war ended because they just use merge again in quotes. Of course. Um, and then are they going to honor those contracts? Who got the contracts uh, that are lower because they signed first? And blah, blah, blah. Is some tennis player that's never played getting a really high contract as opposed to some veteran? And how does that work out? Here's my point, And I don't know where you are in this world, but like at some point, um, in order to maybe, um, put a little bit of, I guess, uh, have a little bit less whiplash. If you're a player at some point, are these players going to organize? I'm, um, I'm dropping out and doing all small local tournaments and supporting local tournaments, man. I don't care about the big circuit anymore. Maybe an APP yeah. once in a while. Yeah. I'm done, I'm done with PPA. Um, yeah. Medusa Leaf was a huge supporter of those guys for a long time. I don't know. I think they're called you know, aloe now or something like yeah. that. But again, yeah. you know, I'd rather support like raw, you know, if they're going right. to be in, into pickleballs against smaller companies. I'm, I'm all, all about supporting local and smaller events. I'm not, I'm not going to feed any money into these big organizations yeah. anymore. I just don't think it's worth it. You know what I mean? Just to say I got the, the $5 medal or whatever, you know what I mean? Or right. Whatever yeah. it is. And I'm not even playing the pro cert, pro part of it. Right. Cause I'm going to get smashed. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. And the um, amateur, you know, I've, I've not heard great things out of the amateur and specifically for the PPA. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, again, I started when that PPA just came out, you know, so the tournaments were a little different now it's like, Whoa, what the heck's going on? You know? So I just, yeah, I don't even bother anymore. The travel expenses and all that just adds up so much. I mean, Right. Yeah. If I'm going to Red Rock, I love that one. You know, I'm going hiking. I'm doing Mount Zion. Sure. I'm doing a bunch of different stuff. I'm mountain biking. You know what I mean? If I got things that I'm planning around the events, no problem, you know, but yeah, um, I don't know how some of these players survive, you know, out there right now. I mean, you know, I know, I don't know, you know, I don't know how they yeah. do it. I remember no, I think at, at some point you have to have, uh, you have to have enough disposable income to pull this yeah. off. You, ha- you have to be in a particular tax bracket or have somebody, you know, 
mom and dad sponsoring you or whatever it is, but because <laughs> yeah, exactly. it, unless you get a, a contract. That, you already you know, hit it on the head. Right there. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. But, and yeah. that's the thing. And it really limits the talent field in a lot of ways, um, yeah. you know, because, you know, only a particular tax bracket starts to play the game, um, which sounds home familiar, school. but yeah, home yeah. School. right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I remember Jack Monroe, he was homeschooled for a long time so he could go play pickleball when he was little. Now he's coming back into the scene, you know, yeah. I know a lot of these players, it's funny, you know, but I'm 52 now. Right. So now I got to, now I got to try out for the NPL, you know, Rick's, Rick's, <laughs> Rick's sister kept on saying, why don't you just do it? Go, go. You yeah. Know, so, yeah. So I'm gonna go to the combine and get my ass kicked. So I'm gonna, I'll be there. You can, you can peg me a couple times. You just gotta get hyped up, you know, hyped up like the wine <laughs> box, you know, and get crazy, you know. That's right. I'm a lefty. I can play right side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. You just take all the balls. I'll take the ones that go over here. <laughs> what, so, what do you think about the MLP and the PPA as far as the scoring format and all that kind of stuff? You know, and um, yeah, it's um, I, I, you know, I came from beach volleyball, so I played um when the big switch happened from going from side out scoring to uh, rally, I had been playing volleyball already about 12, 15 years, you know, mid since the mid eighties. And it happened in the early two thousands and they changed everything. They changed the court size for doubles. They changed the ball. They took antennas off or they put antennas on for doubles. And uh, they changed the yeah, the size of the court. So everything happened at once. At the end of the day, I, the, the same people were still winning. So <laughs> yeah. after all sort of the, you know, hair pulling and hand wringing, at the end of the day, I was still beating the same people and the same people were still beating me. Um, and it really came down to like, everybody wants to know, television. Um, you know, you can go. you predict the timeouts? Can you, you know, which rally scoring, you, you kind of know the length of the game. I would prefer to, for the few tournaments that I played in pickleball to go to a tournament that is rally scoring, because I know I'm not going to sit three hours and wait for some match that just keeps going on and on and on. I think it would keep sure. it tighter. Yeah. And that I like, is it as entertaining as a player? Probably not overall. I don't know. Um, but right. at the same time, every point matters then too. You can't miss drops, man. Yeah. So it, having that being said, there's two things there, right? So you just mentioned viewership. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have viewership, what happens? Well, you don't have pro. <laughs> you don't have, you don't have the money, right? Yeah. Why, why bother doing it? Right. Okay. So what are, what do most pickleball players do right now? Do they watch that? Would they go and watch the MLP or would they want to go play on a Saturday and a Sunday? They'd rather play. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's what I see. You know, I see that too. Yeah. I mean, and most people don't yeah, even know there's pro pickleball that are playing. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, again, it's like the majority of the boom of pickleball growth and explosion is people playing the sport. It's not them watching the MLP in Atlanta or at Las Vegas or whatever it is. Right. I mean, yeah. how many times can you watch Ben Johns play the same people or, right. you know, the same thing. Right. I've, I've, for me, it's okay. Yeah, I'll tune in once in a while. Sure. But after an hour, I'm bored. Right. Yeah. So, right. You know, I'm not going to keep watching. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I think the, uh, the viewership isn't, is if they don't have that viewership, I don't, I don't know how that lasts. You know, um, I don't either. And I think you make a great point. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, pickleball is going to be around whether there's a pro game or not. Yeah. Um, it, it was here, obviously, before the pro game. It'll be here after because a great majority of us aren't concerned with it. Um, and as I, my, my saying that I've been saying over the last decade and it's, it's now sort of applying to professional pickleball is everything is dumb. Um, <laughs> that's where we dumb. are. Everything is yeah. really dumb right now. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you got a bunch of celebrities watch. and billionaires throwing money at something that barely anybody's watching. They're rolling dice, man. Yeah. You just look at the they're streaming numbers. Dice. You go, oh, there's four thousand people watching this on YouTube. Yeah, they're the rolling <laughs> dice. Mo yeah. Most of the investors are are dice rollers. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. they can they can they can pitch dice. You know what I mean? They're used to that game. You know. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, it's it's players playing pickleball, wanting to play pickleball. I mean, um, and you know, what are they getting when they go to these tournaments, you know, and stuff like that? If they're playing a PPA tournament or an APP tournament, you know, APP has been pretty decent, I think, you know, and they're yeah. just sleepers, you know. So I think they may, again, I've heard this and, you know, I think they might prevail a little bit better than 
you know, on a bigger circuit. Yeah. Uh, and tight. they're going international. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, same with us, you know what I mean? We're in London and Italy right now. So, I mean, I love having a brand, you know, Australia. Yeah. It's cool to move around a little bit, you know, and watch right on, the man. Um, yeah. But that's my thoughts on MLP and PPA. Not much. <laughs> yeah, that's all right, man. That's okay. <laughs> well, hey, dude, uh, I don't take up any more of your time. And uh, people can find all the links in the description about some of the things we talked to about and um, including, yeah. obviously, the, the paddles, the, the discounts, the yeah. uh, you know, where the money's going. And, um, you know, a couple of shout outs, Raw as well. Um, I'm glad you guys are hooking up because... Those are two of my uh, my favorite people. So um, I think you guys could do some really cool things together if you choose to do so. So absolutely, absolutely. All right, yeah. Yeah. All right, Gregory Storm, a hey, raw rain and win. Check out all the stuff below. Go find them on um, all their socials and uh, fantastic paddle. Really cool dude. Fun company. Um, thanks for your time, man. Yeah, get that Maui paddle. Hope you enjoyed our interview with Gregory. Hey, get out there, check out the links in the description, get that discount for raw rain and wind paddles down below. And hey, let's pickle.